Bridge. Although I kind of want to poke at Bant Control a little bit more after that Approach League. I don't know if Approach is good, but the Bant Control shell in general felt really good this morning. So we definitely want to lead on Step Links here. And I want to get Temple Garden into Stomping Grounds. So that way I can double Wild Nakatal on two. So Temple Garden on one, so we can play this Kit Kat. And then we can attack for four on two and then play our other cats. If we uh, if we hit another fetch land here, we're gonna have a very good turn three. Well, we need a fetch land next turn. If we miss on fetch land specifically, we could still play Night of the Reliquary next turn, but if we hit fetch land, we're gonna attack them for uh, eight, 11, 14, potentially. <clears throat> I've not tested Alpine Moon in this deck. I think this deck struggles enough against Storm and decks that aren't Val... I think our natural aggro draws can beat up on Valakut pretty consistently with this deck, whereas decks like Storm and Ad Nauseam will have a harder time racing, so I'd rather have Damping Sphere in this, in this archetype, I think. The fact that Blood Sun doesn't affect Tron lands is a big knock against it. That's pretty good. That's the fetch land we wanted for Christmas, chap. So now we get to do this. And we get to do this. <clears throat> So, if I smush here and they block here, they're going to go to two, which seems good for us, right? And I have three lethal threats. I think I just want to be aggressive. Alternatively, I could just attack with this, and then they either chump block or they go to, or they go to five. I think I'd rather just put them to lethal to, I want to put them dead to lightning bolt here. Pretty confident I want to put them dead to bolt. I'm not fetching yet because... Oh, they didn't block. All right, so... Wait, are they dead? They didn't block. They're dead. All right, good. Good chat. Good chat. Sure. Good. Good, clean turn three kill. And that's one of the reasons why I love this deck. This deck can grind... When it needs to grind sometimes, but it can also just run people down. And boy, do I love running people down. Um, this is not a Ghost Quarter matchup, so I'm going to bring in the Kessig Wolf run. I really feel like our main deck is pretty well suited here. I guess Grim Lava Mancer doesn't do a whole lot, so maybe I can swap this out for other things. Extra Tracker and a Helix for extra reach. I think this is fine.
Blood Sun is fine inside of Tron. Do I have a list of the band deck I would consider? I'm going to put it together after the stream's done today, and I'll tweet it out, Locke. It'll be based off of the approach list that we played today with Tarmogoyf in it. I'll probably add a couple more threats like Vendiclick, and we'll see where it goes from there. I haven't played Lotus Cobra in this archetype before, but I don't think we want it. Like, what Lotus Cobra does is allow you to accelerate into things past three mana. And this, this deck, its curve tops out at three. So, like, playing something to ramp you past three when we don't curve past three doesn't make sense to me. Bolas, you should watch the replay on YouTube later. I talk explicitly about that at several points in the league. And I think the lead league does a good example in the games that we play of showing why Tarmogoyf is good in the deck. A little unfortunate that they both had a turn two big play and we haven't found a two drop. <clears throat> I was really hoping to draw like a path or a two mana creature, but alas. All right, sorry about that. My pizza is done now. Let's do that. Grab a mountain. I'll probably just play this tireless tracker out as a 3-2 for 3 next turn just because... Where were you last turn, extra cat? Where were you last turn? Playing this out this turn gives them a chance to kill it before it can generate value, but I have another one to play next turn anyways. Average Bloom with a $5 donation. Clearly this deck's busted. How could you not play it at ND? Seriously, the turn three kill was sexy and I had to donate a little bit. Let's run nerds down with cats. Ain't that the truth? <clears throat> it is a big, scary world. Big, big, scary world. Moto Memory Check says exactly two gigabytes of RAM. So probably give it the old reboot after this match. So they must... They must have Death Shadow here, because like they shocked and they overpaid on that dismember intentionally. <clears throat> so I get to do this. I get to play this, fetch a basic forest, play Wild Nicodle. <clears throat> Probably pretty dead here. Yeah, never, never not dead to Team Rebellion Rage. 
That's why Teamer Battle Rage is great in the Death Shadow deck. <clears throat> dead to Bolt, dead to Snapcaster Mage. When in doubt, Teamer it out. Dead to Radiant Flames, yep. <clears throat> that's that's a magic card. I'd play four trackers in Jund. Hot take trackers better than Bloodbraid Elf. Slug Monster with that brand new Twitch Prime support. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to be greedy. <clears throat> There's a non zero chance this hand does nothing. There's also a chance it just like kills them very quickly. I feel like with double path to exile, I have enough time to fumble around with this hand a little bit too. But if we let's like draw fetch lands the next two turns, we'll destroy them. All right, things are things are not working out. <clears throat> things are not working out. This is not this is not like we drew it up, chat. Path step links. It's fine. We're just tactically waiting to draw the fetch land until we had two step links in play. That way we get double landfall triggers from it. There's a Jund tracker list on my YouTube channel, Turkin. I would start there. I think mean, we had two blood braids and four trackers in it. I cut Dark Confidant, I believe. This is the first match of this league. <clears throat> two pair. Come at me, bro. Fetch land gonna crack you to six. I really don't like Dark Confidant in the current format. I don't think it's particularly good. I think not being able to control your health total while simultaneously upping your curve seems like a really bad plan in a format as aggressive as modern. I think we could miss for the first turn, but we're probably dead now that we missed for a second turn. Hey, Shannon. I feel like it's been a while. Hope you're doing okay. Welcome. I'm going to concede if we miss on a fetch land again this turn. Okay. That's something, I guess. <clears throat> this deck is worse than most when you miss land drops, to be fair. Meaning Fatal Push, Bolted, Fatal Push, and Bolted. <clears throat> A Braid, sure. Be afraid, opponent. This Blade of GOP. It's got one power even without a land drop. It's pretty, talks a pretty big game. Stand back up now that I've gorged myself on pizza. 
There's a good chance they don't have Stubborn Denial in their deck post board. Oh, jeez, holy gosh. Could we kill them with a land here? Could we kill them with a fetch land? Fetch land should kill them, right? Because we have this Renegade Rallyer. Because rally there's no way they can kill both of these, right? No, I think pathing the step links he abraded was far worse than just playing plated GOP at this turn. I want two threats in play to threaten lethal. Come on, fetch land. Come on, fetch land. Come on, fetch land. Come on, fetch land. This is why there's 14 fetches in the deck, chat. This is why there's 14 fetches in the deck. Don't cut fetch lands. Don't cut lands. 25 lands is right. 14 of them fetch. Remember that time we missed our land drop a couple of times and then they didn't do anything and died? God bless. God bless us, everyone. While we're waiting for the second match in this league to pop, actually, while I restart Magic Online, I'd just like to say thank you to everybody who's hanging out here today. Welcome. My name is Jeff Hoagland. If you're new, welcome to the stream. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Glad I didn't scare you off. I stream Magic full-time here on this channel. I'm here 30-plus hours a week. If you're enjoying my stuff, please consider subscribing to my channel. My subscribers are the people that keep me employed here full-time. I would not be here without the wonderful support of all of them. You can also support my stuff by checking out some of my very wonderful sponsors. MTGOTraders.com. I love to buy and sell some Magic Online cards with you. And if you use code Hoagland PayPal, check what the meal said, 8% on your singles orders there. Honey would love to save you some money. Honey is a free browser add-on that when you install it via bit.ly forward slash Hugo Honey, you'll be supporting my content here at no cost to yourself. What Honey does is... It looks at your shopping cart when you're shopping at various places online and it looks at the things you're buying and it searches automatically online for coupon codes and when it can save you money it says hey I can get you a discount here with this code and when it can't save you money it leaves you completely alone so it's unobtrusive and uh, it basically just does good things you should check it out Lisa would like to get you on your way to a better night's sleep Christy and I have been sleeping with Lisa for the last six weeks now it's quite wonderful it's the first time we've ever had a foam mattress I don't think we'd ever go back to a pillow top one you can check out links bit.ly forward slash hooglebed us and bit.ly forward slash hooglebed ca to save $160 or more on your new Lisa mattress. And of course, we'd like to welcome everyone out there to Hooglandia. Please talk to your friendly neighborhood moderator about your complimentary timeout. Remember too, if you didn't catch all of today's stream, we've been going for five hours. We've got four more matches in this league still. Be sure to check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Jeff Hoagland. 100% of my streams get archived there. Um, and I break them up by, by deck so you can watch just the matches that you care about. Just don't call Lisa, honey, or your wife will be mad. <clears throat> we got him, we got him. <clears throat> All right, we're 1-0 in this league after beating Grixis Shadow in the first match. Let's see how we can do. We 5-0'd with this deck in the past, and we 4 one a couple of times. I think this deck is really sweet. To set the bar kind of low, I think this is probably the best Naya deck in Modern. This, this is kind of a color combination that doesn't get a lot of love in the format. I think this deck is doing something pretty objectively powerful. Came for the timeout, stayed for the memes. If Honey is free, how can they afford to sponsor you? So when Honey gives you a discount code for something, they get a kickback from the website that you're buying something from because their discount codes are encouraging you to give them money. So... Honey doesn't do anything offensive with the information that they have. They keep it all to themselves. They don't, they're not Facebook. They don't sell your data. Um, they, they are, they basically work on a referral basis. So when they save you money, they make you, they make money. So they are encouraged to do, be good at their job. This hand is great. <clears throat> Needs a couple more fetch lands, but what hand doesn't with this deck? <laughs> I always love the slaughter that ensues after after the timeout message. Fatal push. What did my pretty kitty ever do to you, opponent? That's so rude. Always remember that your fetch lands in this deck are more valuable than your just basics and shocks. Your fetches trigger your landfall multiple times. Your fetches trigger revolt for your for your Renegade Rallyers, so you want to prioritize holding them. 
I think this deck's really sweet, Colin. I think if you like playing like Naya or Zoo style aggressive decks, this is a very good choice. Opponent start is very good here. Um, that's tough. So I'm definitely playing. I think I'm just going Forest into GOP into Path to Exile here before this gets too scary. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, gosh, chat. Uh, we're going to take one draw to Tireless Tracker, but that's, that one's probably lights out. That one's probably, probably lights out. Can you put this towards four color gifts? Of course I can, Anonomic. Thank you very much for the very generous support. As always, a reminder to anyone who cheers bits or donates dollary dues. For every 100 bits you donate or cheer or $1 you donate, you can up a deck in the queue to get it, make it happen a little bit faster. All right, well, let's cut these Grim Lava Mancers. Definitely want my grindy cards against... Definitely want these grindy cards. I could have upkeep path, but upkeep path exposed me to a stubborn denial without ferocious, which I didn't think was worthwhile. Nice, Duruth. Yeah, honestly, I think this deck can have like a genuinely good Tron matchup, especially with the Damping Spheres. Like we have our Nut Draws game one and then Damping Spheres really helps you post board. Yeah, unless you're already pretty wide, that Liliana is just going to give us a lot of trouble, I think. I'm not sure I'm going to play to because it's pretty bad against Liliana. Yep, yeah, definitely, Puddle Jumper. Make a note of that. And as always, I update any amount you donate or cheer gets updated in the queue at the end of the stream. I'm not updating it live midstream. So at the end of the day, after I sign off, I publish my YouTube stuff and then I update the queue. Uh, the opponent actually had a basic for us last game. So they appear to be playing some kind of Sulte Shadow deck. I'm glad someone's cast cut on your hair. I'm wondering when the aftermath is going to put some ribbons in there. That's... <laughs> That's something, Wraith PK. Thought Seize, sure. Still looking for lands or two drops here. Worst draws are like more things that cost three. Yep. It depends on your deck, honestly. Damping Sphere doesn't accomplish a lot if you can't also pressure your opponent. So while Damping Sphere is very good in decks that can apply pressure like this one, if your deck's not killing the Tron player, they're just going to play through the Damping Sphere. There's a Tarmagusi. Play the land that they know about. Do I want to play Knight of the Reliquary here? I think I do. And then next turn I can go Tracker, Fetch Land, plus Knight, like make a bunch of clues. Yep. Really need another Path to Exile here. There's a good chance we're just not going to be able to race here. I feel like we're pretty far behind. Maybe this Bolt plus this Chandra can put us in a good position to race. It depends on how many follow-up threats they have here. Like, if they have another Goy for a Death Shadow here, we're probably going to be in a bad spot. Yep. Yeah. Looks like we're dead. I guess I can crack this clue and try and find a path, but I think that's not really going to matter. This is only a little baby 5-5. Five five. It's a little bit, a little bit too aggressive on the opponents in there for us. Ooh, that popped really fast. Yeah, yeah, Stream Decker is great. 
fantastic integration. I like to make it easy for people to find the info that they're looking for. This hand's not super aggressive, but if our opponent's playing anything creature-based, this hand's really good. Like if our opponent's playing something like humans, even like Hollowed One to an extent, this hand is fine. Uh, I think this is gonna be our last league. Let's see how let's see how quick we finish. Actually, let me ask my wife if she was her thing tonight or not. I think Christy has somewhere she has to be at 6 o'clock tonight, which probably means this needs to be my last league. Yeah, you too, high speed run. So, do I bolt this on one? <clears throat> or am I supposed to? I'm definitely getting stomping grounds here. Yeah, this will have to be my last league. Tomorrow we'll probably squeeze in five, but today, today this has to be my last one so Christy can get to where she needs to be tonight in time. So, do I want to bolt Boreal Druid or do I want to play Grim Lava Mancer? I think I want to bolt the Boreal Druid, yeah. It probably means red green, red green Eldrazi, right? Yeah, it was weird, Nicholas. I wasn't really a fan. <clears throat> there are a lot of one mana green dorks. A lot of them. Path to Elf. Because modern dredge doesn't have a good way to sacrifice their creatures, Sam. When people were still figuring out dredge in modern, there were people that tested it alongside like Greater, Greater Gargadon as a sacrifice outlet. But unlike Legacy Dredge, which has uh, Cabal Therapy and Dread Return in it, modern dredge doesn't have a good way to sacrifice the creatures that they're bringing back every turn. Legacy Dredge also has Icarid. Pretty aggressive start. It's possible I was supposed to fetch a basic mountain on one. That's actually a great draw. I'm gonna feel really bad if they thought not see or me, but this has first strike, so it can block this 3-1 profitably, which is great for us. I don't think I'm supposed to play scared of a thought not here. Yeah, yeah, I agree, Wanna Be Beetle. It was like a lot of the like fringe modern decks that people play, like it genuinely wasn't good, but it did sweet things on occasion. No Thought Not is great. Eldrazi Mimic, all right. Well, my first striker is looking real good so far. Go ahead and play this Grim Lava Mancer out. If they have a Reality Smusher next turn, we could be in trouble because that means the Eldrazi Mimic is going to get to crack us for five. But I guess if we go to five, we go to nine, and then this puts us to eight, and then we're going to get to path that plus Lava Man this down. So we're actually, actually shaping up to be in a pretty good spot here, right? Depends on how much gas they have left in the tank after these. They have another obligator here. We're going to be in trouble. No, Smasher hasn't been bugged for a while. Okay, so they're taking my Grim Lava Mancer. Which, in response to this, I'm going to go ahead and make this a 3-3.
I guess they can use Grim Lava Mancer to kill itself. Maybe I'm not supposed to fetch there, actually. Yeah, is there, is there any reason to fetch? Because, like, if they go to Grim Lava Mancer, my GOP, I've been just fetching response, right? I'm not really sure that those work well together, Polly, because the Eldrazi cards mean your lands aren't going to be able to deal damage to you, which, mean, which means Death Shadow is just much worse. Yeah, I think I should have held the fetch land. I should have held the fetch land. There was no reason to fetch. I was thinking I didn't want them to Grim Lava answer my thing, but if the Grim Lava answered my thing, I'd just be able to fetch in response. Honestly, they're probably going to Grim Lava Mancer their own the Grim Lava Mancer here. I feel like that card poses a big threat on this board with all of their X1, so I wouldn't be surprised to see Grim Lava Mancer take itself out here. Oh, we're dismembering me. Okay. So that's their last card. Um, I'm going to go ahead and path this then. Take seven down to six. And then I can Grim Lava Mancer the Mimic next turn. And then we're actually in a pretty okay spot here, I guess. We have three cards in hand that are all miserable, but it's the top of our deck versus the top of their deck. Like, we're ahead on board right now. That's pretty good. So I get to play this. I get to crack my fetch. Get a basic mountain here. Play this, get my plated GOP back. And this is again, one of the reasons why I really love this deck is Renegade Rallyer is a card that allows you to have explosive turn three kills, but it also allows us to grind and generate card advantage in games like this, where that's what we want to be doing. So it's a very, it's a very flexible card that helps us, helps us take whatever role we need to be taking in a given match. We need to fade a Reality Smasher for a turn or two here, but we're going to be pretty good if we can do that. Ugh, they draw another Obligator. They drew another Obligator. I'm not sure we're going to be able to beat through that. Obligator and Smasher are the worst case scenarios for us here. What do we got? What do we got? Casual. Casual up five minutes on clock. I spent a minute and 45 making decisions this game. Maybe, maybe they had something come up in real life. Okay, that makes me feel like they didn't draw Obligator. I feel like if they drew Obligator, they would have wanted to save the mana to activate Grim Lava Mancer here. But maybe they did and they're just playing a little loose. They did, in fact, draw another Obligator. Okay, so what are you taking here? You're taking my plated Geopede, okay? <clears throat> So if they have a land here, they're attacking with four three power things, which means I can clear their board by trading most of my board off. So they, they must have a land, right? Yeah. So I'm going to go block, block, Grim Lava Mancer, kill this, take three. Everything's gonna die except the plated GOP here.
And then I have Plated Geopede and the cards in my hand versus the top of their deck. We are at two, though. That's a, that's a pretty phenomenal draw. Lumberjack with that three-month three subscription. Thank you very much and welcome back. I do appreciate it. Thank you for the quarter of a year of support. So we're looking to dodge, like, Lightning Bolts and Haste hate Creatures, but Knight of the Reliquary even locks us up against Reality Smasher here because she's going to be a 6-6. Six, six. So I'm going to fetch something tapped here and go to 1. 1 and 0 confirmed to be different numbers. And then uh, we actually have them dead uh, on board. Um, so uh, draw a brick, please. <coughs> draw draw another land. Don't draw a bolt. Don't blood braid into a bolt. Any reason to play fetch instead of canopy? Yeah, because I want to I want to make my Knight of the Reliquary a 6-6. Six, six. Although I guess... Um, I guess a Rising Canopy could still make it a 6-6, six, six, huh? All right, we're not gonna we're not gonna play that one. And that one we're gonna avoid. I'm going to go ahead and draw a card here because any removal spell is lethal. It's a ghost quarter. Um, oh gosh, this is game one, right? Yeah, my Kessig Wolf runs on the board. Well, I guess Kessig wouldn't really do anything here, right? Or did do a haste creature. They're obligated to block here, so I need a brick out of them or another creature. Alrighty. Need another non haster or a land or like a dismember or something like that. Alright, we got him. That was, that was a close game. I did not think we were going to beat that last obligator, and we ended up pulling it off. I'd already played a land that turn. I think Chandra comes in because she can kill Thought Knots here. Honestly, I think these Helixes are probably pretty good too. I feel like they're aggressive enough that Tireless Tracker is probably not where I want to be in life. What else do I want to trim here? I feel like I need, I need two more cuts here. Knight's pretty good because she's nice and big. I think Ooze actually tends to be pretty good in these matchups because, like, we both have a lot of creatures that are dying. So Ooze is both a large threat that can get bigger than their Eldrazi's and is a card that gains us a bunch of health. I think I'm going to cut some copies of Wild in the Cuddle here, actually. I think especially on the draw, I just, like, I'm not going to be that aggressive. Well, I guess, like, Step Links is probably better to cut then. I'm going to cut Step Links, actually. Because if we're if we're playing defense, I feel like, I feel like especially on the draw in this matchup, we're playing defense. I kind of want to board into a more controlling deck. Although it's possible, if I'm planning to board into a more controlling deck, that two copies of Tireless Tracker are better than the last two copies of Step Links. Just so I can generate some card advantage while I'm killing their stuff. Yeah, Nactyl's fine. It's just like a 3-3 for 1, right? What about Scapeshift in this deck? So if you go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Jeff Hoagland, you can search for Scapeshift Aggro on there. I've played iterations of Scapeshift of this deck with Scapeshift in them, and I think on average they're less consistent than this deck. While Scapeshift can allow you to do some really explosive things, I think from a consistency standpoint, it's much worse than this deck. Uh, I trimmed the tireless trackers in a couple of step links and brought in some more removal, like these lightning helixes that are in our hand. I want to prioritize fetching here as opposed to using the sacred foundry because I want food for my Grim Lava Mancer ASAP. I also would like my Knight of the Royal Query to potentially be bigger depending on what we're doing. No, uh... <clears throat> Probably just go, like, fetch, tap, shock, land, lava main here. Although I guess... I guess exiling, they've been activating their Grove of the Burn Willows. I'm confused why you're asking that question, Isubasi. Like, those cards do, like, functionally different things. Yeah, Boreal Druid seems much better than Noble Hierarch in this red-green Eldrazi deck. Noble Hierarch was constantly awkward the fact that this can make colorless mana seems huge <clears throat> i 
that's really unfortunate for us. I think I'm just going to go ahead and Helix this here. Yeah, it's, well, it's not just a dual land in their deck. So their deck is red, green, and colorless. So Grove technically makes three colors of mana for them because they need they need colorless mana to cast their Eldrazi spells. So they play both Carpulsion Forest and Grove of the Burn Willows. I'm just going to go ahead and get this Knight of the Reliquary into play here. I'll probably get like Night Knight going. I, sh I, I left my... I left my Kessig in the board. I, I, the more I play this deck, the more I feel like Kessig should probably just be main deck and the Ghost Quarter should be sideboarded. There's a very real chance of that. We'll see. Maybe this Knight can encourage them to pop the Relic. Gemstone Caverns, yep. A smusher. Smells like a smusher. Well, Relic goes a long way to beating beating Knight. Do I have a treetop village in this deck still? I think I do. We did at one point. Maybe I've cut it from this iteration. I do not have a treetop. I have two horizon canopies though. Smusher is a tough one. So we're going to take five here. I think I'm actually just going to play Plated Geopede next turn because Plated Geopede alongside Knight of the Reliquary can turn this into a 5-5, five five, which lets it jump up and kill Reality Smasher, which is nice. That's also a pretty good draw. Huh. Go ahead and pass back here. So with this Path to Exile, we can actually beat a second Reality Smasher here even. Which is nice. Dismember is probably one of their better cards, but on the back of Night of the Aquarium, we could even sequence around Lightning Bolt potentially. You have taken all of my lands away. My knight is just a little girl. Little itty bitty baby knight of the reliquary. And a second smusher, okay. So we, we need their last card to not be a removal spell. If their last card is a removal spell, we could be in trouble. If it's not, however, we're gonna be in a pretty good spot. Ancient Star uses the green Eldrazi card? Yeah, basically. If they ban Ancient Stirrings, Red Black Eldrazi could probably be okay. I think we played a Red Black Eldrazi list on stream at some point. I feel like someone donated for that and we played it. Get Smusher on out of here. I'm actually not going to activate my Knight here because I um, I really don't want to crack the fetch line next turn. I wanna, I'm going to play this other Knight out anyways. I'm going to hold on to this Mountain for the time being. The Hardened Scales deck is pretty good, huh? Survey says... <clears throat> so each of these generate two land drops. So this is plus four, plus eight, ten, twelve. So we get thirteen then with this Plated GOP next turn. Eldrazi Obligator is really annoying.
see what they want to grab here. Yep. Honestly, Isubus, I would try something like uh, Nissa Voice of Zendikar if I wanted to grind against control decks with that with that deck. I, I'd want something that would be a threat on its own without depending on anything else. So I think my goal here is going to be to get them to pop this Relic of Progenitus. All right, so they're playing that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and throw... If they attack with everything, I'm going to go ahead and throw a Knight of the Reliquary in front of this Eldrazi Obligator, and then we'll get two lands into my discard pile to encourage them to pop the Relic so we trade. Yeah, so they smush with everything here. We're going to end up taking 8, and then 9, 10. We're going to end up at 4 here. But with Knight of the Reliquaries going on, we could, we could end up in an okay spot regardless. So I'm going to go ahead and Knight my basic planes here and turn it into a fetch land. And then I'm going to turn this fetch land into a temple garden, and this will be a 4-4. Four four. Which means if they want to kill my Knight of the Reliquary, they're going to have to exile this Relic of Progenitus. And I'm going to go ahead and fetch one more here. Uh, blue black decks in general are not very powerful in modern. Although there are plenty of both Liliana the Veil decks and Snapcaster Mage decks individually. Usually you don't see those two paired up though. Is it better to get a canopy instead of a fetch there? Maybe. And thank you very much for the two month resubscription. I appreciate that. Thanks for re upping here. Thanks for keeping me employed. I kind of like getting a fetch land because getting a fetch land into play makes my play to GOP better the following turn. Extra GOP is awesome. Because it lets me play this and then I can get, a, get in a nug with this first one while playing defense with this other one. What do you think blue black needs to be competitive? A clock needs a way to actually kill people. That's the most important thing in modern, being able to actually kill people. Uh, we're one and one. Another land is great for us there. Is it another obligator? No, just a mimic. Well, that's absurd for us. All right, so I'm gonna knight here and grab this. Can I force a block next turn? I can force blocks. Oh, geez, are they dead? How many lands do I have to fetch still? So I'm through three shocks. I have two shocks and a basic in my deck. They might be pretty close to dead. So how many lands does this have to get? I think there's three lands that this gets out of my deck still. Do I have a basic plane somewhere too, or did that get exiled? My basic planes is gone. So I have three lands left that I can fetch up. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to go ahead and... Do this, get this temple garden back. Which makes these 10, and then this makes them 14, and then this makes them lethal. So yeah, so they have to block at least one of those. Subbing is $5.99 on the Android app because Google Play needs their cut. So if you subscribe using the desktop or your, your mobile browser, so if you use this link here in your mobile browser, it'll still be the normal four ninety nine. Well, they just know blocks, so they're dead. <clears throat> yeah, we gotta get a fetch land here. Crack both fetches. Get three more landfall triggers. Crack them for eighteen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 
All right, let's do it. Two and one, slow and steady. This is gonna be my last league of the day. Thanks everyone for hanging out, I do appreciate it. If you think this deck is sweet and this is your first time seeing it, be sure to check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Jeff Hogan, 100% of my stuff gets archived there and I break it up by deck so you can watch just the matches that you care about. If you want more of this deck, you're gonna to wanna to search Landfall Aggro on my YouTube channel. Uh, we died to Sultai Death Shadow. I think blue red Bay is better than blue B. Feels like you B if you find. I I think playing tempo decks and not playing lightning bolts in modern feels really bad. Barrels, thank you for the brand new Twitch Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for keeping me employed here. <laughs> huh. Well, I mean, if this is a matchup where Grim Lava Mancer or Path to Exile is good, this hand is great. I'm gonna hit keep and they're gonna be playing like Celestial Colonnade dot deck and I'm gonna be really sad, but I think this is a keep. I think this is a keep. Deadly Sight with the brand new tier one sub. Thank you very much for the support. Thanks for helping me stay around. Do this and pass the turn back. You all move. How far into this league? We are currently in match three. So we've got this match and one more before we're done for the day. I've been going for almost six hours. I should give you your cut. <laughs> yeah, the Blue Red Fairies deck is sweet. That's definitely a deck guy. Ooh. Ooh, this hand is so good against Infect, chat. This hand is so good against Infect. Um, I think I'm going to hold the fetch land for a turn. In case we draw a non-fetch land next turn. Land. Ding. All right. Well, we get to be pretty liberal with our health total here, which is nice. Was I supposed to wait on this other fetch land? It's very possible I was supposed to wait on this other fetch land, huh? I don't want to die by mistake next turn, right? I think using that other fetch land was wrong. I think I messed up there. I think I was supposed to just crack one so I could lava man. Well, I think we're gonna go, go all in at this point. We'll let this happen. They're gonna do a thing here. I'd have to block to potentially not die next turn, which seems bad for me. I'm just going to go ahead and pass back here. I'm going to hold the Lava Mancer activation up. They are, in fact, doing things. That's a dismember. All right. I'm gonna kill this in response. It's possible I should save those cards in my discard pile just because I have another Lava Mancer here, but I think this is worth it. And then like next turn, I can path, path their Blighted Agent here. And like we're slow, we're slowly running them out of resources here. That's just an absurd draw. So this lets me crack my fetch for a mountain. I can go ahead and do this and get a 3-2 into play. Been meaning to re-up the sub level. Finally remember to do it. Thank you, Full Metal Adept, for the big sub this month. I appreciate that. Be sure to uh, fill out the form to let me know what deck you'd like to submit this month for your Tier 3 sub. So, this is going to be... 
This is a small thing, but in response to the fetch land, I'm going to go ahead and Grim Lava Mancer this. And the reason why I'm doing it in response is this lets me know if I need to get a tap land or an untapped land. Because because this died, I can just get a tap land. But if their Blighted Agent lived, I was going to want to get an untapped land so that way I could have Path to Exile up next turn to not die. Let's start with Path to Exile here, attack them for four. This deck's Infect matchup is probably pretty reasonable. Yeah, we probably don't want to run Lava Mancer in because I really don't want to trade it for a Dryad Arbor. Lava Mancer is going to continue to give them headaches. Skullmorn, thank you for the brand new Twitch Prime support. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month. Welcome. <clears throat> Adding an extra color is pretty clunky. Splashing in modern is generally far less free than people tend to think it is. All right, so in these other aggressive matches, we basically want to turn into a control deck. So we're gonna bring in all of this extra removal and top end and card advantage, and I'm gonna board out these step linkses and some of our other cards to make us a little bit less grindy and a little bit, are a little bit less aggressive and a little bit more grindy. Sorry about the mutes and the nose wiping today. I have a bit of a cold right now. No, I don't think spheres are good enough here. This is a matchup where both sides want to be playing multiple spells in a turn. I don't think I want Grudge. I guess they do have Mirror too. I'm definitely bringing in... I guess Scavenging Ooze is pretty bad. Yeah, I'd buy that for a dollar. I'm going to cut two Ralliers too. Do I want Grudge? I wasn't going to board in Grudge, but then someone mentioned Icker Claw Mirror. Yeah, I'm going to board in one Grudge. I feel like the first Grudge is probably reasonable. This seems good. We actually have a pretty decent curve here, too. Yeah, they could have Spell Skate. Okay, yeah, maybe I should just board in both. Nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it like this. I'm going to leave it like this. Yeah, I think if they have Invisible Stalker, this is definitely a matchup they bring it in for, but I don't really have sideboard for Invisible Stalker, so, like, bringing it up, like, really doesn't have a point. So, Moose Droppings, we're not... So, basically... When we're bringing in a card like Chandra, I'm not expecting to play Chandra and have her win the game on her own. What I'm expecting Chandra to do in a matchup like this is be that third or fourth piece of removal after my opponent has spent their cards interacting with their other things. So basically, Chandra is like that extra nail in the coffin, not the reason we're going to be successful. That's a spell skite. So, what do I want to do here? Ectomaniac with that brand new tier one sub. Thank you very much for the support. Welcome. So I'm glad. I guess I only boarded. Did I board in both grudges? I only bred in one. Maybe we'll bring in bring in both grudges for the last one. I got a lot of decisions here, so I I could just play GOP. I could just play, I could play Grim Lava Mancer plus Path the Spell Skite. I'm not saying she's win more. I'm saying she does things we're interested in doing. When we need a threat, she's going to be a threat. And when we need an answer, she's an additional answer. I kind of like going Grim Lava Mancer plus Path to Exile here. 
Also, getting the mountain into play lets my wild Nakata hit for more points of damage. So, I think the chances of us dying next turn to just this Inkbond Nexus are really low. They're not zero because we're giving our opponents an extra land here, but I think developing our board like this puts us in the best possible chance to win the game. Yeah, I think I think we're just supposed to like cross our fingers here and like hope they don't kill us on the third turn after this. I need to donate for Jake combos. Well, I am here. I am here. Let the jank flow through you. This is really important. You want to be activating your Grim Lava Mancer on your turn. You don't want to be using it on your opponent's turn when they can pump it and hit you for extra points of damage. So use this proactively. I didn't want to path on their upkeep because of cards like this. I wanted to make sure their spell skite got exiled. I didn't want them to be able to save it with something like Vines of the Vastwood or Spell Pierce or any of the other number of cards that Infect plays that would save their creature when they have mana up. I think our affinity matchup is actually pretty good. <clears throat> Are we dead? We're dead to become events. I think, I think on average, our affinity matchup is very reasonable with this deck. They have become immense. They, they have exact, it's the last card in their hand that it takes every card in their discard pile. Good beats, good beats. Good, good beats. Uh, aye, 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 aye. <clears throat> I don't know, Phoenix Wolf. The, the actual answer to that question involves a lot of testing. You need to play a bunch of games with Alpine Moons in your sideboard and figure out if they give you a reasonable chance. I guess I want this Ancient Grudge, huh? Let's cut this Renegade earlier. No, I don't really enjoy playing Limited. The idea of playing a TCG event and losing because my opponent opened better cards than I did, I find frustrating beyond belief and completely uninteresting. When, when my opponent's deck is better than mine in Constructed, I can think about how I could build my deck differently or different things I could actively do to make changes to like have a better outcome. But when my opponent's cards are just better than mine, that's not interesting to me. I'm actually not even a huge fan of cube, especially the vintage cube. Vintage cube is very high variance. Would any kind of Tron deck run engineered explosives? No, not usually. Tron usually has a hard time making lots of different colored mana, which makes engineered explosives less than ideal for them. This is a pretty solid aggressive start in our part here. We get to go and attack for four here, and then we've got like trips removal to back it up. Sure, sometimes, sometimes, sure, but okay, okay, but this is this is the thing though, Eclair. Isn't it the same as losing an event because the opponent's deck was a better shuffling order? That happens in, in Limited as well. So you have all of the same variants that Constructive ha Constructed has on top of having other variants. So like, yes, you lose to, you lose to the shuffler sometimes, but you also lose to the shuffler while playing Limited. So like, you have this reason that you lose on top of this other reason that you lose. It's just like, well, what what variance exists in Constructor that doesn't exist in Limited? All of all of the variance that exists in Limited exists in Constructed, and then Limited has card quality variance on top of it. Yeah, this is gonna be my last league of the day. This is match number four. We're gonna play one more after this, then we're gonna wrap it up. All right. Kitchen Finks. <laughs> yep. All right. Interesting. Interesting. We played a bunch of other things today that I'll be up on YouTube later. <clears throat> I agree. I agree that there is... I never said... And again, this is the thing people always say when I talk about this. People always try to make it sound like I've implied that there's no skill unlimited. Every TCG format has plenty of skill to leverage. What I am saying is that there is, in addition to the normal TCG skill, there is added variance in limited that doesn't exist in constructed. And I find that frustrating. I find it uninteresting, so I don't play it. 
Uh, we went four and one with the Bant Control deck. We could be getting baited into dying here. And, and, and there's nothing wrong after, with everything I just said, there's nothing wrong with enjoying playing limited. If you enjoy playing and play playing limited, don't let my distaste for the format stop you from playing the format you enjoy. Not every TCG format has to be relevant for every player. Just because I like or don't like something doesn't mean you shouldn't like it. You shouldn't like it. Like what I like doesn't change what you like. Just someone someone asked me and I answered. Do, do, doing well in any large event, limited or constructed, takes a good deal of luck. There's a lot of variance in magic. This is still infect, yep. And, and actually, we could die here. If their hand is good again, we could die here. But I think I'm supposed to fight over my wild McConnell there. The fact that we only took one there is great for us. I would really like to draw a land here so we can play knight plus hold up quasi pride mage. Although now that they did that, I think I want to just Helix here. It's possible I should have led on the Bolt as opposed to the Helix just to like gain the three, but gaining the three probably doesn't really matter. I think the Bant deck we played today was really sweet. I think I'm probably going to cut, like, the approach to the Second Suns, because that was probably too cute, and I'm going to work on that idea some more. <clears throat> yeah, I always find it weird when people get, like, kind of uppity and defensive when someone says they don't care for a format that they like. It's like, it's, it's okay if I don't like your favorite thing. Me liking or not liking your favorite thing shouldn't take away from your feelings of it. Yeah, clicks, and I think I want more pressure in general in the 75. We'll probably play it again on stream at some point in the future. I mean, we're basically a burn deck. Like, we're, we're an aggressive creature deck. So I understand why the opponent boarded in Kitchen Finks here. It makes sense to me. It bought them a lot of time. Kitchen Finks is why they're, why they're so far into this game. Do I want to play this? I think I want to hold this to bluff. I don't really need the mana. This Knight of Reliquary can even profitably block this Icar Claw Mirror, which is great for us. We got a lot of pressure in play here, so we've got pretty good things going on. If they can kill us with this Ink Moth through the Quasily Pride Mage, obviously we're dead, but I feel like we're, we're, we're ahead at the moment. This Knight of the Reliquary also fetches Ghost Quarter next turn, too. So again, you never want to fight over their infect creatures inside of combat unless they are lethal. Unless their creature is killing you, don't fight over it inside of combat. If they pass priority here, I'm saying take one. If they pass priority here, I'm saying take three. Yes, take three. Don't kill me. Thank you. Now at their end of turn, I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice this Quasily Pride Mage to destroy the Ink Moth Nexus. And now this way, if they have something like Vines of the Vastwood or Blossoming Defense, they've burned their card, but they didn't deal extra infect to me with it. Oh, I could have killed Icar Claw, so it's lethal, right? I don't know. I feel like being conservative here is fine. I feel like they have a protection spell here. So I really don't want to be too aggressive. <clears throat> I guess they're obligated to block here, huh? And we are snapping off a block with this tireless tracker next turn if they offer it to us. Not, not close. 
they attack with this, we are blocking. What are my thoughts on EDH? I think EDH makes a really shitty competitive format. I don't play Magic casually, so it just, like, isn't for me. I think it's really great that a lot of people enjoy it, but I am not the target audience. Boopy on the nose. Boop ya. Boop ya on the nose. <clears throat> so that puts us to three and one here. Got one more match here before we wrap things up. Thanks everyone for hanging out. I do appreciate it. The, and I don't, I don't know. It's probably just my mindset because I've played competitive Magic for so long. Magic seems like such an absurdly expensive game to play casually to me. Like, I felt like if I wanted to play a casual game, why wouldn't I just like go buy Clank or Dominion or like any of these deck building or like Photosynthesis or Azul, any of these wonderful board games that are just like, you know, $40 or $50 for the box and six of us or four of us can play it for forever. My opponent was very pleasant there, pleasant there, actually, Anironix. They said good games and always a pleasure. So good games to you, Infect opponent. <clears throat> I actually can't remember the last time we played Dominion. There's so many other good deck builders out there. Dominion, like, basically was the first in the deck building genre. And now there's so many fantastic ones that exist. I like that. I feel like in order for me to enjoy casual EDH, I, I would need to be playing with decks that were explicitly designed and well tested to play against each other. Like, I feel like someone else pointed out there, like, what people want out of a game of Magic is different from group to group. So, like, if you just have a bunch of people show up with EDH decks together, there are going to be lots of varying power levels, which is probably going to create really awful games of Magic for a lot of the people playing. Whereas, like, if someone was like, this is my box of eight EDH decks, and we each pick one, and we all play together, and they're perfectly well balanced against each other, and it's just like, that would probably be a fun way to play Magic. But just, like, everybody showing up with their own EDH deck of varying costs and power levels, that sounds terrible. That does not sound like a good casual time. That sounds like somebody's sodium levels are going to get real high before the night is over. Elves. I actually don't know how this matchup plays out. This is probably a matchup where we're going to board into a more controlling deck again, but I don't know if we can efficiently handle them while they go wide. All right, so I think I'm going to get a basic mountain here to preserve my health total a little bit. We'll play this plated Geopede. No removal in my hand here is probably really bad against them. If they have like an Arc Druid or an Azuri on two here, probably going to get run over really quickly. I mean, Modern is a format full of rancid games of Magic. Like, people often ask why I concede so many matches on stream. Like, we, like, you know, realistically in, like, 20 matches, I probably concede, like, one or two on average. Like, 5 to 10% of the matches. There are a ton of matches in Modern that they're just miserable games of Magic, right? They're just, like, not interesting. One player has very few relevant decisions and just gets run over. You could play Pyroclasm in the sideboard of this deck. I don't think you really need it, though. Like, obviously, I'm about to get run over in this game here, and it, we definitely, like, need Pyroclasm against, like, what my opponent is doing specifically here. But I think, in general, Pyroclasm is not particularly good in this deck. This is, like, the first game I've played where I've looked at it and gone, man, I could really use a Pyroclasm. And honestly, I, we don't even really need Pyroclasm, right? If I just had, like, Bolt or Lightning Helix to kill this Arctruid, the rest of their board doesn't really do anything. 
And especially post board when I'm gonna have access to like more lightning helixes and stuff, I feel like we're probably gonna be in a pretty good spot. Yeah, probably want to hold a fetch back next turn so that way we can block with our plated geopedes. I think I want to play Knight, play Arid Mesa Pass here for now. I think getting the Knight into play is important. It's very possible I should just like put the other plated geopede into play though. These Geopedes are going to start abyssing them very soon with this Knight of the Reliquary. So, like, if they don't have, like, Collecting Company into Insanity here, we're going to be in a pretty good spot. And if they had Company, they probably would have played it on their turn, right? Nope, nope, they have Company and they were just waiting. Tilt. I feel like they should have just, like, done this on their turn and then killed us. But, you know, what do I know? <sighs> Looks like it might be a quick last one. And again here, like, I feel like if we have one to two pieces of spot removal per game... We're probably going to be pretty okay here. Again, want to board into a little bit more controlling role. I think I side out these step lynxes, bring in these lightning helixes and the extra tracker. I think Chandra's probably too slow for this matchup, so I'm just going to board like this. While tireless tracker doesn't seem like a card that's too fantastic in this matchup, it's definitely a little bit slow. I think when we're boarding in more spot removal to assume a more controlling role, we need card advantage so that way when we're one for winning our opponent, we don't run out of gas especially when they have access to things like Collected Company. This is going to be my last match of the day. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. We've been going for about six and a half hours now already. I'm going to hit publish on a bunch of stuff on YouTube momentarily. So remember, if you're hungry for more Hogland action, always head on over to my YouTube channel. There's 30, 40, 50 hours a week added there. Tons of modern, tons of magic. I'll be back tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time with more live magic probably modern again i don't know i gotta look at the donation queue and see who bumped what and see where we end up at is hoglandia vegetarian no the people of hoglandia can eat whatever they like the king however is vegetarian so you should watch more videos with this deck dylan bane in today's league We've played mostly against other aggressive decks where we're siding into a more controlling role. And when we're siding into a more controlling role, Step Links is bad. However, there are a lot of decks in Modern, like Blue-White Control and Jeskai and Storm and Tron and lots of these other decks where we don't take a controlling role and we need to stay aggressive. Step Links and Plated Geopede are what allow us to have linear turn three kills in the matchup where we are the beatdown. So... In the matches where we are, we need to be more controlling and slower and be the bigger deck, Step Links is terrible and we board it out. In the matches where we're the beatdown, it's very important to have a critical mass of one mana creature so we can apply pressure consistently. I don't think Damping Sphere is very good against Elves. It's like passable on the play and it's like mediocre to bat on the draw. I'd much rather just have cards that like kill their things or add pressure to the board. And like I said, there's lots of leagues up with this deck, and we've definitely played against Tron and Control decks in those leagues, and you can kind of see the power of Step Links and having a consistent threat base in those matches, for sure, if you're interested in this deck. Yeah, Elves, Elves makes a lot of mana. Damping Sphere is good against, like, exactly the start they had last game. I'm going to keep this hand open. we draw a land. I think this hand is really absurd if we had another fetch land. This is basically a zoo deck. That is, that is correct. This is basically a zoo deck. I'm going to get Stomping Ground here so I can guaranteed cast plated Geopede next turn. Gives us two turns to draw fetch land. What does the term zoo mean in decks? So zoo, zoo decks refer to decks that are 
basically creature-based aggressive decks that tend to have a little bit of reach. So this deck is actually like the epitome of a landfall zoo deck, basically. It plays one and two mana creatures on curve, and then it uses cards like Lightning Bolt, or in this deck's case, Lightning Helix as well, to do a little bit of reach to jump up and close games out. Now, I think the Heritage Druid is fine. I want to get the Plated GOP into play here because next turn I'm going to get to go Fetch Land, Crack Fetch Land, Renegade Rallyer back by Fetch Land, Crack Fetch Land, Bolt one of your things, which means we're going to need to hit for a large amount of damage or the Force on the Block, one of the two. Well, thanks for the support, Puddle Jumper. I really appreciate it. I'm glad you're enjoying being here. It's zoo because it plays animals. Rawr, rawr. Yes, does this count as an animal? This is like a bug, right? Do they, have, do they have bugs at the zoo? I can't remember. It's been a while since I've been to a zoo. Actually, it's funny. The last time I went to a major zoo, it was for my buddy's wedding reception. One of the guys I went to college with had his wedding reception at the Brookfield Zoo. It was actually kind of sweet. So this is sweet. They are almost dead. They are all almost dead here. So we do this. I'm going to get basic planes here. My kids aren't quite old enough to really appreciate the zoo. We've taken them. There's a small zoo here in Bloomington we've gone to a couple of times. And they're pretty disinterested. So we haven't like dedicated an entire day to going and doing that just yet. Get this Arid Mesa back. So, and again, like, could you, if this had been a, a, uh, a step links, they'd almost be dead here. So let's crack them down to six. There could maybe be an argument for pathing the Elvish Arc Druid as opposed to bolting it just so we have the bolt for extra reach here because that would make like another Helix or another bolt next turn lethal. But I think I like not giving them the extra land here. Is there a video of yours that I can see of a deck like this so I can came at the end of the stream. Yeah, so all of my streams get archived on my YouTube channel. So this video of this very stream will be available probably about 45 minutes from now. It takes a little bit to upload and process, but there are tons of past leagues with decks very close to this one. You wanna search for Landfall Aggro. There's probably uh, half a dozen leagues or more up there at this point. I played this deck a few times in the past and uh, at, uh, Average Bloom is a viewer and someone that supports the content a lot that donates to see it fairly often. Yeah, they would be at one, and then their their highs and canopy would have been off if that was a step links. Here's hoping if we hit a fetch land next turn, this plated GOP plus Kessig Wolf run is probably going to be lethal. All right, let's put our money where our mouth is. Funded by a follower, yep. <laughs> All right, so if I crack this fetch it gets this up to five and then <clears throat> i can path my renegade rallier to get plus two as well making this a seven and then i can kessig wolf run for lethal actually it's lethal even without pathing my own thing right because this i can just give it plus two here Oh, we can also path the blocker, yep. And you know what? I'm actually just gonna go ahead and do this for one and then path the Arc Druid here because it's lethal this way still. And then if my opponent has anything, their Druid is gone and their Dwinin's Elite is gone. So in case they have anything, anything fishy here, like a dismember maybe. 
Yeah, I think my change from today, I'm really happy with the 75, I think. I think my change from today is I'd, I'd, I'd swap the Ghost Quarter to the board and put the Kessig in the main. I think I would play this exact 75 again. All right, let's sit down for this last game. This is gonna be the last one of the day. Enjoy the ride down, folks. Thanks everyone for hanging out through the end. Over 900 people, that's awesome. Yeah, the Beaumont careers were unimpressive. I've been really happy with two Grim Lava Mancer and two Scavenging Ooze. I've been pretty happy with, with these, these Grim Lava Mancer and Scavenging Ooze. Thank you for not playing music on your channel. I was trying to watch another stream's past broadcast. The whole thing was muted because of music. Yep. Yep. What's our record? We are currently 3-1. I wouldn't be surprised if we finished 3-2, though. This matchup seems like it's pretty hard. This deck can just turn three Tron, though. So, like, you can just, like, mulligan aggressively and, like, kill them. Because I don't have room for a 26 land. No, I think Wild Nakatl is better than Step Links in this matchup because we're a more controlling deck in this matchup on average, and Wild Nakatl is better at blocking. Wild Nakatl is better at playing defense. Yeah, the Force. This is a deck that can really take advantage of Damping Sphere because it's able to apply pressure. This seems like really good with the Red Source, and it's like okay with that one, so I think I'm going to keep it. Nah, I think tap lands really suck. Like, part of the re part of the way we make plated GOP and our other things so consistent is by having access to um, a lot of fetch lands consistently. In order to fit things like more Kessig Wolf runs in or Sajiri steps, we'd have to cut fetch, cut fetch lands, which makes our landfall creatures much worse. I guess you could maybe argue this hand could be a mulligan because not only is it missing red, but like Horizon Canopy is going to deal a lot of damage to ourselves. No, I, I think getting to play eight pieces of removal in the main is a big deal right now. I think I would just board the Ghost Quarter. Do they not have a payoff here? They do have a payoff. All right, so we get to path their first payoff. It depends on how many more they have here. That is one of those. So I'm actually going to sit on that for a second. Because I'd like to... Although maybe I should put into play the Threat and the Nactyl being a 3-3. I kind of want to save the Arid Mesa for triggering Revolt with Renegade Rallier. But maybe that's ambitious and I should just play it out so that way I could bolt something this turn. Although I guess I can pass something this turn still, so I think we're in an okay spot. So they have one card left here. Their last card isn't Collected Company or Shaman of the Pack. We should be in a pretty good spot. And it's kind of great for us. Um, I'm gonna grab a mountain here. Yeah, Moto is is locking up. We have in fact cashed every league we've played this deck. Three two is our worst record worst record with it. It's very consistent. God, it is it is chug a lug in here. It's not even using that much RAM. I wonder if it's a ser server side. Sometimes Moto has real bad server side lag. Call it a feature. And I can tell it's just Moto because like, if my computer's having issues, OBS will, will lock up and have encoding issues. Let's see if their last card's a bomb or if it's a dud. It smells like a collected company. It's unfortunate for me. All right, here's hoping for high variance companies.
Okay. And I'm, I'm actually not going to kill the Arc Druid right away because I I get punished if they draw exactly Azuri. But outside of exactly Azuri here, the Arc Druid being in play could encourage them to make an attack that's like not great for them. Yeah, I think this is a pretty good Knight of the Reliquary deck. To set the bar low, a lot of the other Knight of the Reliquary decks in Modern are like pretty bad. Wow, no smush. Okay, um... I think with no smush there, I'm just going to pass back to me. No, that's not true. I'm just going to go grab a basic planes here. And, uh... I mean, Green-White Green -White Value Town's a pretty bad deck. I said, I said pretty bad, and I meant it. There's Todd Stevens' Green-White Unplayables is, like, the only other Knight of the Reliquary, Knight of the Reliquary deck in the format. I lovingly call that deck green, white, unplayables for a reason. Huh. I think I'd rather just get Knight of the Reliquary going here. Rather than Renegade Rallying back. Tapping my lands this way means if I want a Lightning Bolt this turn, I have to Fetch Shock, but I think that's fine. I think the odds of needing to Fetch Shock are pretty low here. Kitchen Fink, sure. I mean, Todd Stevens is pretty realistic. I think he knows his deck is like, you know, just like it's playable, but like not amazing. He's a smart dude. He wins games of Magic because he's a smart dude. So I'm going to Fetch here... And just grab a Shockland tap so I have more red mana. And then I think next turn we'll probably cycle the Horizon Canopy and then Renegade Rallyer back the Horizon Canopy. Because I have my Knight of the Reliquary on tap to search up red mana on demand. That's another bolt. That's pretty good for us. We need to find a way to break the stalemate. Although I guess I have Kessig Wolfrun to break the stalemate sometime soon. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and Renegade Rallyer here. With the, rene with the Plated GOP draw... Am I supposed to get a fetch land here? Quite possibly. It's quite possible I'm supposed to get a fetch land back here. Well, I guess I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take the horizon canopy and keep digging for a, I think I wanna dig for a copy of, uh, I want to dig for a copy of uh, blah, 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 um, Grim Lava Mancer. Definitely a non-zero amount. I think, I think a big part of what gave me such a good win rate with the deck Kiki Cord was because I am good at playing games that involve big board states, and other players make worse decisions with, uh, in matches that involve big board states on average. Yeah, we can get Kessig with the Knight of the Royal Quarry. That is also true. I just like I feel like I need to stabilize the board a little bit more before I get to that point. I do, I do like big board states. God, this is so bad. I was like, there's only one more game. I might, I might restart before this game is done. I guess I have 18 minutes to play. It is like lagging an absurd amount. I do need to start applying pressure because my opponent is just like drawing two copies of Shaman of the Pack to like end the game very quickly. <laughs> I would not recommend playing Kiki Cord. That deck is very bad. The lag you are currently seeing is not my computer lagging. It's a moto feature lag. I'm just going to stick the cat into play here. I have, I have an i7 with 32 gigs of RAM and a mid-range graphics card. It's currently encoding multiple video streams as a web browser, and the only thing that's lagging on my computer is Magic Online because, well, Magic Online. I guess I'm just supposed to start chipping in here, huh? Am I... 
I don't actually know at this point. I think I'm just gonna go to my turn. It's a lot of bolts. Um, these kitchen things are really annoying. I couldn't exist with eight. Like I think I think my computer on average is like, as you can see, everything else running perfectly fine. Like right now, I think I'm using what? I'm using ten and a half gigs of RAM. Yeah, bolting Heritage Druid might be a good idea. It makes it so like if they rip an Azuri, it's much less good. I don't hate that idea. I'll sack this and see what we get here before I make any other decisions. That's a tireless tracker. That's really good. Tireless tracker is the type of card that can like really pull us ahead here. Yeah, I think I like the idea of bolting a, a Heritage Druid here. Uh, we're three and one, and this is game three of the last match. Once their kitchen finxes are both smaller, I think we'll probably start attacking with the wild and the cuddles as well. Another knight. That's pretty good. I guess, do I even want... <clears throat> I guess I'm going to play this other knight out, huh? Am I going to play the tracker? No, I'm going to play the tracker and start generating cards, I think. Because, like, I'm going to need to knight a land out to... Uh, the Heritage Druid... The Heritage Druids do matter. I guess I only killed one of them, though, huh? Which is a little bit loose. Uh, we're currently up two minutes on clock, but Moto running slowly is, like, slowly making that be less of a case. If they rip a shaman, we just die. Is that true? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's not actually true, right? I think I'm just doing this now so that way I can crack it in case I draw a land I could play it out. Uh, getting multiple large creatures into play so we have to beat them down. Yeah, I'm planning to play the SCG Open in Indianapolis at the end of this month as well as the Team Open in Vegas at the end of or in the middle of November. Uh, I've been live for six and a half hours. I usually go for about six hours or so at a minimum. Got to get through that donation queue. It's not going to clear itself. Yep, that's the shaman on the back. So they finally drew on the turn I got aggressive, so we're probably dead. Yeah, we're dead. All right. It's possible I should have been more aggressive faster. I just really didn't have... I felt like I really didn't have the tools. Like, they were at 28, so, like, I wasn't going to be able to force them to block. They were just going to, like, take hits and kills on the crackback. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All right. Yeah, I think my only takeaway from that league is... I think Elves is a hard matchup, but... I don't think Elves is a popular enough deck that I would change anything about this deck to change the Elf matchup. I think the only thing I would do with this list outside of... In terms of changes, is that I would take... I would take the swap, and I would make it happen. <laughs> I would put the Kessig Wolf run into the main and slide the Ghost Quarter into the sideboard. If you really wanted to hedge elves, like you were, you were going to play this deck and you were going to expect to play a bunch of elves in, in a given in a given tournament, I would probably play some copies of Pyroclasm in the 75. But again, I think like Modern's a format where you can't really board cards for narrow specific matchups and elves is a pretty narrow specific matchup. So I think I would just chalk that one up. Like if we would have faded Shaman for a little bit more there, I think we would have been in an okay spot. 
any rate, uh, I'm signing off for the night. Everybody have a good evening, and be sure to uh, check back tomorrow morning. I'll be live at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time with some more modern action. And if you want to see more of me while I'm not live, be sure to check out youtube.com forward slash Jeff Hoagland. All my stuff gets archived there, and I break it up by deck so you can watch just the matches that you care about.